There was recently a big hailstorm in my area that did a lot of damage to people's property. And as usual, a swarm of fly-by-night roofing companies and Mr. Fixits came crawling out of the woodwork in search of a cut of those juicy insurance checks. We lucked out, though. While most of my neighbors suffered all kinds of damage around their properties, we had little to none. I think a lot of it had to do with my solar panels and the angle in which our cars were parked. Our older car, a 2005 VW Jetta, did have a few little dents, but nothing worth getting upset about, and I couldn't see a single mark on my truck. When you compare this to my neighbors on the side street, many whose cars were so bad that they were written off as totaled, I can't think of any other reason. When it comes to our roof, it only had been a couple of years since ours was completely replaced. After battling the insurance company for a long time, I submitted a claim again and it was finally approved. Then maybe six months passed before we purchased the panels, which cover close to 85% of the roof itself. I doubt the shingles had even had a chance to settle yet, a process that usually occurs in the heat of the summer. Clearly, we're not in need of any repairs around my home, but this hasn't stopped the dime store repairmen from harassing us constantly. In the span of a week, probably six different individuals and companies came to my door. I was nice at first. I simply told them my roof was new and I didn't need their services. Most of them got the hint and went away, maybe leaving their car behind, but a few tried to convince me that I was wrong. This kind of behavior is what gets on my nerves. When I pointed out that the roof couldn't be damaged without also harming the panels too, they realized what kind of person they were dealing with, and this put an end to the visitors. No one was tricking me, or so I thought then. The man who would prove me wrong showed up two or three days after the storm. I just happened to be out, and when I returned, I found a business card and a flyer stuck in my screen door. Although the name on the card was not familiar to me, I noticed that he represented my own insurer, I wondered why they would send a rep to speak to me. They had to have known that they just paid for a roof not that long ago. I briefly thought about calling, but it didn't seem worth the effort. I'd just mention it to the guy if he ever came back. And this is about the time the scammers began showing up. The next few days were a constant flood of cowboys and independent contractors knocking on my door. I got really annoyed of the chaos pretty quick, so when the insurance rep returned the next week... I wasn't as kind as I should have been. In spite of this, he was understanding and thanked me for the information, and with that I assumed that all of this was settled. Another few days went by and I ran into a neighbor while walking my dog. We got into a discussion and he joked about me changing my mind. I ignored it at first. This neighbor isn't exactly a genius, but my instincts told me that there was more to it. I asked him to clarify his meaning and he told me that he had seen a man with a ladder and clipboard around my property and spoken to him earlier in the day. His description of the man sounded very similar to this insurance rep, and this made me furious seeing as he knew the situation and had no reason to be there, especially while I was at work. I cut the walk short and returned home. He owed me an explanation and I wanted it right then. I called the number on the card and was connected to the main operator. When I asked to speak to him, she hesitated a moment before transferring me. After briefly being on hold, a female voice came on and asked me again who I wanted to talk to. I told her the rep's name and she informed me that the man had retired and was no longer with the company. I assumed that she'd misheard me, so I spelled the man's name out to make sure that she hadn't, and she was adamant. He had retired over a year ago and could no longer help me, but if I needed assistance, she could help me instead. None of this made any sense. I was getting frustrated. Why was I being lied to? I told her everything that had occurred. The card. Him showing up without notifying me. Everything. And she apologized for all of the issues that I was having, but swore that she knew for a fact that he had not been at my home. I was losing my cool now. It sounded like she was calling me a liar, and I demanded that she take it back. I was prepared to cancel my policy if she didn't, and she assured me that that was not her intention, and I could hear the reluctance in her voice and began to sense something strange was really going on. I prodded, I pushed, until she gave in and just told me. As it turned out, the man on the card could not have been at my house. Not only had he retired almost two years ago, but he had been forced to do so, because he had some terminal illness that had killed him not long after. 
Even after hearing all of this, I had a hard time accepting it. I foolishly asked for proof, and this is when she raised her voice. He and her had been close friends, I guess, since she had attended the funeral. I could hear her begin to sniffle and realize that, okay, maybe I'd gone too far, and I apologized and explained my level of confusion and concern. After speaking a little while longer, we concluded that it had been a man posing as an employee, possibly to appear more professional. He had probably received some cards from the rep in the past, and now that I had finally cooled off, the entire situation was clear to me. He had used the information gleaned from a seemingly casual conversation to plan a break-in of my home. I had given him all types of information, including when I worked. He must have been in the course of robbery, but was scared off by the sight of my neighbor. I never thought that I'd be grateful to anyone for being so nosy, but it appeared to have benefited me in this case. All of this is just conjecture, of course. Without any proof of forced entry or the like, it's gonna have to do. But looking back, I feel stupid for being so trusting of some random stranger. He must have known that the card would work on some idiot and I happened to be that exact idiot. It also explains why he was so forgiving of my brashness. In light of what occurred, I no longer speak to strangers coming to my door, for obvious reasons. I encourage anyone reading this, should they be so unfortunate to have severe weather in their area, be very wary of the people it attracts. I thought that I was wise to all the tricks, but they proved me wrong. If you didn't contact anyone to come to your home, they shouldn't be trusted. There are a lot of underhanded people out there and their numbers will only grow as the economy continues to take some downturn. Make a plan and follow it, otherwise you may not be as lucky as I was. If you enjoyed this scary story, listen to thousands more either over on the Let's Read YouTube channel or podcast.